Batman has one rule, no killing. He certainly has the means to build a weapon that could level a city or at the very least kill a guy, but he never does. That's funny, because the way that he most commonly saves people is also the most deadly. What's the second most famous Batman gadget aside from the cape? His grappling gun. It's taken many forms over the years through movies and video games and comics, but the idea is the same. Shoot out a wire that sticks into a wall and ascend or hook onto someone or something and catch it as it's falling. When I started researching this episode, I wanted to figure out how fast Batman could rappel up the side of a building without ripping his arm right off. But it turns out that's really, really complicated and it's hard to find numbers on how much force it takes to rip someone's arm or leg right off of their body. But the numbers that I did find pointed me in a different direction that's still also really fun and uh, kinda morbid. Um, so let's go that direction. Looking through references and journal entries and blog posts and horror stories of people getting their arms ripped off while playing tug of war. Don't Google search that. I ended up agreeing with Randall Monroe of the fantastic webcomic XKCD, who put the limb ripping limit at around 10 kilonewtons or 10,000 newtons of force. I didn't go with Batman ripping off his own arm when shooting off his grapple gun, because when you look at the movies, he never really zips up a building that fast. But what he does do is grab other people's limbs all the time when they're falling off of the sides of buildings. Would that tear off their limbs instead? Oh! To find out, we have to look at specific examples from the films. And I must warn you, it does not turn out well, Bruce. To calculate the kind of forces that someone would experience after coming to a complete stop while in free fall, you'd have to know how fast they're moving when they do stop. And to do that, when someone is falling towards the ground, they're accelerating at G, or the acceleration due to gravity around 10 meters per second per second. And if you multiply that by T, or the amount of time that they are falling, you get V, or the velocity they are traveling at when they are stopped by a grappling hook. We also have to know something called impulse, or I. That's just how something's momentum changes, which is that velocity times that thing's mass. That equals impulse. And if you divide that impulse by the time it takes them to stop, you no longer have impulse. You have a force. Do you see why I'm more high energy usually? Sounding like a teacher is not always fun. So let's look at a few examples to see if Batman's grappling gun would break you. In 1989's Batman, Vicki Vale is falling for around 16 seconds before she and Batman are stopped. After 16 seconds, the pair would be falling at around 160 meters per second, ignoring air resistance. But in reality, they would be falling at a bit over terminal velocity for a person-shaped thing, around 53 meters per second. If they stopped in maybe a tenth of a second, the force on the pair is huge, 46 thousand newtons. That would certainly rip off a limb or at least be enough G's to kill them. Dad! In 1995's Batman Forever, Nicole Kidman, or whatever her character's name was, is falling for around 19 seconds before the grappling hook line goes totally rigid. She should also be going at a terminal velocity by then, or around 53 meters per second, and if the stopping time is the same, she's pulling 38 kilonewtons of force. Yep, she's dead. Dad! Oh yeah, and Robin too. Dad! In 2008's The Dark Knight, the Joker falls for only five seconds before being caught by the leg. Still, he'd nearly hit terminal velocity in that time, or around 50 meters per second. When stopped, his leg experiences 44,000 newtons. Yep, leg ramp! Basically, if you've been falling off of something for more than a second or two, Batman is not gonna be able to save you by grappling your body. Just ask Spider-Man about Gwen Stacy. Oh. Anyway, there are still ways to get around death by grapple. You can increase the amount of time that someone takes to slow down. I bet Batman can build a device that slowly slows someone down after it, it, it feels tension and, and doesn't just go totally rigid. Although I'm gonna bet that Batman is gonna accidentally break his one rule every once in a while. Because science, that's the way. <laughs>
By now, I'm sure you've seen our kick-ass Team Nerdist video where me and the gang are trying to get back our Xboxes from a bunch of jerks and we take them out. And by take them out, I mean division style. Well, if you're wondering why we did that, it wasn't just because they had our Xboxes and Malik's sweet, sweet saves. It's to celebrate the release of Tom Clancy's The Division out right now on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. Like our sketch, it's about the aftermath of a massive pandemic that descends the city and New York City into chaos. And you are an agent of The Division, you have to upgrade your gear and specialize and, and take the city back. So go grab that because it sounds like a lot of fun. And thank you to The Division for sponsoring today's episode. At Superior Spider asks on Twitter, when Nightcrawler teleports, shouldn't he create some kind of vacuum that would create a huge boom whenever he teleported? Yes, Superior Spider, you are most correct. If he was to teleport, he would leave a, a vacuum, an area of space that had nothing where his atoms used to be, and the air would rush in at many hundreds of meters per second and close and cause an audible sonic boom around that area. So, not very stealthy. Try to, try to get into the, what, to the White House with that. Or whatever he did in that movie. Movie.